We're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel on Think Tank. This is Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Let me say it again. This is Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Whoa, very important. It's, you know, it's probably the most important initiative we have. We have to focus on it all the time, spend all the money we have to spend, never be distracted from our, our don't you agree? I agree. <laughs> Let's keep moving forward with it. That's Ramsey Brown from Hawaiian Electric, or rather, <laughs> I say, <laughs> Hawaii Energy. Hawaii. He's an energy engineer at Hawaii Energy. And next to him, we have our principal guest today, Godwin Severa. He's an assistant researcher at HNEI, the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute at UH Manoa. And next to him, Trevor Morgan, this, again, assistant researcher, but doing different kind of research at Hawaii Natural Energy Institute at UH Manoa. Welcome all of you to the show, yeah? Thank, Thank you. you Thanks for having us here. All right, Ramsey, your turn. Well, we were talking about Verge, and so I thought I'd tell our guests about this excellent conference that happened. And, you know, being newer in this industry, it was fun to just be alongside and rub elbows with uh, a lot of high-profile folks in our energy industry. Um, but the biggest takeaway for me was to be in action and to empower other people to be in action. We talked about policy. We talked about price signals on our way here um, to starting the show. But really, what can we do to get the ball rolling and get in action? And that's what I saw on some of the panels we had. Brian Kealoha was on a panel with Commissioner Akiba, so we got to talk about policy there. And then we had Caroline Carl, our deputy, who was on a panel with an LED salesperson who was in there installing LEDs, telling us, you know, from the front lines what's going on and how do we connect the policy and the research to what's actually the boots on the ground and what's happening out there. You were um, clearly in evidence there. You and, and uh, Brian and uh, Carolyn, and it was great to see Hawaii Energy be so well represented and be involved in these policy panels. Mm -hmm. um, you guys are sort of, you know, going out to the front line here when you do that. Yeah. So I hope you do it all the time. Yeah, that's what we want to continue to do, um, continue the conversation. And uh, we'll show some of your viewers uh, exactly what Verge was about through a little short video clip. We have. Okay, let's see it. Nice movie. Thank you. you. were there. Thank you, guys. So that was Verge. Uh, we're going to keep the, keep the conversation going, keep the synergy working together. We want to leverage other community groups, um, as we talked about. I want to, my personal goal this upcoming year is to get out more in front of the customers, to work with other groups such as HNEI, the Chamber of Commerce, the Architectural and Engineering Organization to see what we can do to actually make this happen, be in action. Yeah, you can be the glue. We'll you know, everybody the likes show. you guys. Yeah. So you can be the glue. You can bring all the players together and, and have sort of a coalescence. You have them the work center. together. Yeah, have them, have them collaborate. Play nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Ramsey, this is great. Thank you for coming down. Yeah. Thank you for doing the conference. I thought the conference was very good. Uh, the Think Tech made a movie of it, yeah. uh, part of it anyway, and um, I'm happy that you made a part of it, a movie a part of it too. Our movie will play, oh, gee, a couple of weeks from now okay. on uh, OC16. That's we'll definitely Spectrum take a look. OC16. Spectrum <laughs> OC16. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ramsey. Thanks for having us. Aloha. We'll be right back. We're going to take a short break, and then we're going to discuss the research that's being done at HNEI with uh, Trevor Morgan and uh, Godwin Severa. We'll be right back. My name is Raya Salter, and I'm the host of Power Up Hawaii, which you can see live from 1 to 1.30 every Tuesday at thinktechhawaii.com and then later on YouTube. I am an energy attorney, clean energy advocate, and community outreach specialist. And on Power Up Hawaii, we come together to talk about how can Hawaii walk towards a clean, renewable, and just energy future. To do that, we talk to stakeholders all over the spectrum, from clean energy technology folks to community groups to politics 
politicians to regulators to the utility. So please join us Tuesdays at one o'clock for Power Up Hawaii. Hey, aloha, this is Andrew from Integrated Security Technologies uh, out here on behalf of PSA and your Cybersecurity Committee. Uh, I got through Denver, I thought I'd give you a quick update on what we're doing heading into convention. I hope you all get down there in October. Um, if you haven't gotten into Tier Zero yet and worked on that material, I encourage you to do so. But I can tell you that our committee is moving on through Tiers uh, 1 through 5. And uh, we've got some great new tools to help you sort of gauge yourself and help you with your policies and your implementations uh, through tiers um, one and two. Uh, I'll be presenting that material down there at the uh, convention, so uh, please come on down. And um, in the meantime, if there's any particular issues that you're having, feel free to send them to the committee. Uh, we've got a great group of folks working there. And if you've got some people on your team that are more interested in this, uh, feel free to have them call us up and uh, maybe they can uh, join our committee and help out a little bit. So thanks a lot, I look forward to seeing you there. Aloha. Some say scuba divers are the poor man's astronaut. At Dive Heart, we believe that to be true. We say forget the moon. Dive Heart can help children, adults, and veterans of all abilities escape gravity right here on Earth. Search DiveHeart.org and imagine the possibilities in your life. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense. Okay, we're back, we're live uh, with the second part of our Hawaii State of Clean Energy show today. <clears throat> and it uh, features, uh, what are we calling it? Energy technology for the future, mm, breakthrough Great. innovation. Whoa, exciting this mystery there. I feel excited now. <laughs> and, and in case you didn't recognize the lady on the far end, that is Sharon Moriwaki. She's co-chair of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum and a central figure in the development of clean energy in our state for about 100 years. <laughs> sure, you know. <laughs> say hello, Sharon. Hello and hey, welcome. I welcome. knew you'd say that, yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's, uh, we're gonna break this down. First, HNEI, HNEI, Hawaii Natural Energy Institute. It's at UH Manoa, but there's also a facility on Cook Street or near Cook Street downtown, yeah? And, there, and we have been meeting this month, we have been meeting some fabulous researchers from really all over the world who are doing world-class research in energy right here. In case you didn't know it, you gotta know that. That's a big take-home point, that we have real talent here they at HNEI. All over the world. Yeah, and uh, so they're working on things that are really cutting edge, and, and the world needs these things, and certainly Hawaii needs these things if it's gonna um, you know, make traction in uh, renewable energy technology. And you need new technology. If we don't do it, somebody else, I promise, will do it. Uh, the stakes <laughs> are huge. Yeah. So, and these guys are working completely different things. I hope you talk to each other. Have coffee once in a while. You know, we do. Say hi. We do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Godwin, let's begin with you. Uh, Godwin Severa, Assistant Researcher, PhD, and MBA. What do you need an MBA for? To help commercialize technology. Oh, got it. Okay, you're a commercialization guy. Uh, I know yeah, your course. method um, about your madness <laughs> now, yeah. <laughs> so, tell us about your research. So uh, my research uh, at HNEI is uh, focused on developing new materials that we can use for uh, hydrogen storage and for um, uh, air purification because um, you need clean air for your fuel cell. Uh, the air that we have in the air is um, has uh, compounds like carbon dioxide, uh, like uh, sulfur dioxide, which can uh, combine with the platinum catalyst in fuel cells and reduce the efficiency of fuel cells. So part of my research is, is trying to make uh, new materials that can be used to uh, remove uh, the impurities before the air 
can get into uh, fuel cells. So <clears throat> I'll well, we have fuel cells now that work, right? Yes. But you're, you're going to try to make them more efficient in the way they, in the way they, they burn the fuel. Uh, my intention is really to try to make sure that the fuel cell operates uh, with the efficiency that it's supposed to, because uh, that's why. So I'm more like working on on the ends of uh, the fuel cell. Uh, firstly, on um, the uh, the air that's going into the fuel cell that's providing the oxygen that that's needed to maintain the efficiency of the fuel cell. I want to make sure that that air is pure so that you don't lose your, your fuel cell efficiency. Okay. And the process you're working on would include little wee tiny little tiny little fuel cells like that that you put in a computer, but also way big huge scale uh, fuel cells that you use to generate lots of power, right? Yeah, in other words, whatever you're doing will affect all fuel cells. Yes, yeah, mostly the, uh, but the main focus for now has been the PEM fuel cells, the ones that we, we intend to use for um, uh, for automotive automobile application. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so, how do you make the air pure? The uh, you know the air that you feed into this chemical process. So, what you do is um, the state of the art right now uses uh, um, compounds like uh, potassium hydroxide that's been deposited on uh, activated carbon. But the challenge with these uh, state of the art materials is that they are not uh, reversible. So it means. After a while, you have to take out that um, uh, filter and throw it out. And then at the end of the day, you can imagine if we have a lot of fuel cell cars, we are going to generate a lot of hazardous uh, mm -hmm. uh, waste. So my intention is to make um, uh, fuel, uh, filter materials that you can be able to uh, regenerate so that you can mm -hmm. continuously use it and that have high capacity so that it lasts longer than the normal materials that are used uh, So is currently. it that you never have to throw it away then, if, you, if you're successful in your breakthrough? Um, eventually, uh, any chemical at some point will uh, uh, lose efficiency, but the, uh, my intention is to really just to make sure, instead of uh, by throwing it maybe after 100 hours, maybe throw it after 1,000 hours, mm -hmm. in, and also instead of uh, capturing um, 100, uh, grams of uh, of pollutants may capture two two hundred grams or three hundred mm. grams of pollutant. So I'm looking at uh, both ends uh, of the spectrum, trying to increase performance but also increase long longevity of uh, of the uh, air filter material. So we don't have to throw into the, the um, you know we, we can do things to recycle instead of going to the waste. Yes. You know, the dump is getting yeah. so full. If there's any way that we could stop that from going as well. Yeah, that would yeah, be helpful. Yeah. Yeah. What I hear you saying is that the membrane in the fuel cell deteriorates. If there are contaminants in the air that's fed into the process, the fuel cell is going to deteriorate quicker? Yes, yes. Specifically, what I'm uh, looking at is that uh, the, uh, the issue in mostly has to do with uh, the platinum catalyst. Because, for instance, when the platinum combines with uh, uh, sulfur dioxide, it forms... Which would platinum. be an impurity. Yeah, which would be an, an impurity. It forms platinum sulfide. And then that uh, platinum is no longer available for helping with the production of uh, energy in the fuel mm. cell. Mm. Well, we, we, do, we boil down all the wedding rings. <laughs> 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 okay, yeah, never mind. But, but, but Godwin said there was a thing on the back end, too, that you're working on, right? You said you, you're stopping that, or you, you're reducing the impurities on, of going into the fuel cell, but on the back end, are you doing something? You said there are two things you're oh, working on. Oh, yes. Uh, on the other side, um, I'm trying to make hydrogen storage materials. Uh, because for now, uh, currently, we are using um, the state of the art is the 700 bar um, hydrogen tanks. I mean, which are really, so in the short term, that's a, a good thing. But in the long term, we need uh, materials which are much safer, we, the way you don't have to worry about uh, the high pressure that's being used mm -hmm. with the um, at 700 bar. Mm -hmm. And also where uh, you have um, um, uh, less, you have more space in your car. Because with the 700 bar, bar hydrogen mm -hmm. tanks, it's very big. Mm. So the solution would be to uh, have uh, compounds called metal hydrides that can store hydrogen in the solid state 
and you can store more hydrogen per unit volume compared mm -hmm. to the amount you store uh, in the um, uh, high pressure tanks. So right now I actually have a DOE uh, Department of Energy project where I'm looking at making new novel materials that are geared towards improving mm -hmm. um, metal hydrides for automobile uh, applications. Mm -hmm. So you're working on multiple aspects of the fuel cell, the, the air and, and the materials that go into the fuel cell itself. Yes. And, and the storage uh, materials. Mm -hmm. So you're all over fuel cells. Yes, the intention is really to make sure that uh, we do have, um, uh, we make it into the clean energy economy and uh, we uh, think of uh, things that might not necessarily be of concern now, but that could be of concern once uh, that uh, renew or that clean energy economy is, uh, is there. So, yeah. So what well, is the <coughs> potential breakthrough in your area? that you're working on that you think will take us, transform or take us into the future for um, an efficient fuel cell, cheaper, more efficient fuel cell? So uh, in terms of fuel cell, I think uh, the fuel cell itself, I think that topic was uh, discussed uh, with uh, uh, Dr. Jean Pierre, mm. but uh, what I can talk to is on terms of uh, the, the, storage. Uh, the, sto the storage. So mm. what I'm really looking at is trying to have um, uh, materials that are, are reversible, that you can still, um, that can reversibly store hydrogen for long periods of time without mm. having to uh, uh, throw the material away, similar mm. to what I'm working on with the air purification materials. Mm. But I'm also trying to make sure that those materials work under op uh, normal operating conditions of fuel cells, which is around 80 to 100 degrees C. So mm -hmm. the biggest break breakthrough uh, in terms of metal hydrides would be really to try to m make the materials reversible and also make them work at, um, at uh, the low temperatures of between mm -hmm. 80 to 100 degrees C. So that's really where my, most of my research is. Uh, you look, you're looking for a patent? Do you have a patent? Are you looking for a patent? Oh, I actually have a patent um, uh, based on uh, magnesium boride. Uh, we did, um, this, this is a patent between the University of Hawaii and uh, Sandia National Labs, and uh, uh, we, where we managed to hydrogenate magnesium boride um, back to magnesium borohydride. So the magnesium borohydride will be the material that you can potentially use in your, to, as a hydrogen source for your fuel cell, and then it forms uh, the uh, decomposition or the de uh, the after removing the hydrogen you end up with uh, the magnesium borate so that had never been done before to hydrogenate the magnesium borate back to um, magnesium borohydride and there's a lot of uh, research that is going on right now with the department of energy that's focused on trying to make this material work uh, at lower temperatures and lower pressures yeah, we hope so. We hope the Department of Energy will continue to support your research, but we are not sure that will happen these days. But what, what is your PhD in, in chemistry, material science? What do you have? Uh, my PhD is in uh, chemistry. So my thesis was uh, on hydrogen storage materials uh, mm. develop, development for my PhD. I actually did my PhD here at uh, University of, uh, of Hawaii. Ah. And then after that, I did my postdoc where I was looking at uh, Hawaii Natural Energy Institute, where I was looking at... Um, um, using ionic liquids for the pretreatment of bio biomass prior to the use of that biomass um, uh, in um, oh. uh, biofuel production. Okay, let, well, I, let me ask Trevor. Trevor, are you impressed? Very impressed. I yeah. knew you would be impressed. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm very impressed with him too. Okay, okay. <laughs> and Sean and I are impressed with both of you. <laughs> so Sean, tell, tell us about your science. Okay, so I'm more of a chemical engineer. But I've also got a, my first degree is analytical chemistry. So it's a combination of analytical chemistry and chemical engineering. And the work I'm doing here in Hawaii is mainly focused on thermochemical engineering. So that's using basically heat temperatures, that's the thermo part, to drive chemical reactions to produce products that we want. So particularly... And chemical reactions including, includes combustion, no? Yeah? Exactly, yeah. So that includes everything from combustion through to gasification to pyrolysis. So just to briefly explain, combustion is a process where there's enough oxygen to fully react with the carbon and hydrogen in your fuel to produce CO2 and water. If there's not enough oxygen, then the material will break down producing CO, carbon monoxide, 
and hydrogen. So they're reactive gases that have a number of uses. They can either be burned, which is more efficient than burning, say, mm. biomass and burning biomass directly to produce mm. heat and power. You can decompose the biomass into a gas which is composed of hydrogen and CO. Now that can actually be used to feed a fuel cell, as in the work that Godwin's doing. But the problem is, if there are any contaminants in that gas, it will damage the fuel cell. Same gas, yeah, the same issue. You guys do have a common denominator. Exactly, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of overlap with these things. Yeah. Um, and also, you can use that gas to drive reactions to produce methanol, diesel, gasoline, jet fuel. So some mm -hmm. of the projects I'm working on is looking at making jet fuel from biomass mm -hmm. here in Hawaii. So well, that would be an amazing discovery. Mm -hmm. I mean, has, is it that happening be, it, anywhere it else? Done. It's it, been done all around the world. But it's a question of whether yeah. it can be done uh, well, efficiently. We're, just, we're specifically looking at tropical feedstocks because most of the work happens in Europe or mainland US and they're not looking at tropical feedstocks because they don't have them. Now, if we do turn to a biomass economy, it would make sense that most of the biomass can be produced in tropical regions in much greater yield than in mainland Europe or United States. So, so when, you, when you go to work every day, Yep. at the laboratory at East, East West Center Road up there in UH Manila. Yep. What do you do? You test, I guess you, both of you, well, you're, you're design... testing on different processes and materials to see how they work together. Yeah, yeah so we do a lot of experimental work. So we design reaction, reactors and then we build those reactors and then we put our samples in there, process them. We do this on small scale mainly because you've got much greater control of the variables. So one of the things people don't really appreciate when you go to a much larger scale, it's much more difficult to isolate individual variables and understand their role on the process. So with processes like I work on gasification pyrolysis, you've got many, many competing reactions and processes, pressure, temperature, time, all have an effect. So Godwin, Godwin uh, looking for a patent, uh, he's talking about material science, talking about taking one kind of compound or another and and seeing if it works to, to do what he wants. But in yeah. your case, what, what are you looking for a patent on? Do you have one? Well, so I don't have any patents, actually. And most of the work I do is just put out into the public domain and with the idea that that information is then available to anybody. And if industry can make use of that, go ahead and make use of it. Because for me, it's not about me personally making money. I would rather see progress. In, That's very altruistic. Um, <laughs> Yeah. yeah. No, but I mean, we want that. And yeah. money is a we want, we want Hawaii to be a center. <laughs> you can get carried away chasing money. <laughs> but yeah, so, and a lot of the work we're doing is building off of maybe like 100 years of research that's gone into coal and petroleum. So a lot of the processes we use are very similar. Developed in petroleum. <laughs> but biomass is a much more complicated material to work with. Because Why? it's very variable in its composition. So we say coal, we know that this type of coal has these properties no matter where you find it in the world. So when it goes into a power station, they know what they're dealing with. The problem with biomass, you can have eucalyptus growing on this side of the field and it will have different properties to eucalyptus on the other side of the field sometimes, and particularly if it's on different locations. You have to know about plant science. So you really need to know about these things. And this is the problem. So a lot of people sort of think, oh, biomass is biomass, it's all the same. No, it's not. No. And yeah. particularly when you become to waste streams, like municipal solid waste, mm -hmm. we do work on that as well, mm -hmm. trying to produce hydrogen or usable fuels mm -hmm. um, from, but again, the, inhomogeneity of the fuel causes you a lot of problems. So what we see would be a good idea if there was more sorting of the waste when it was collected. So if you collected wood waste separate from plastic it's waste it's and keep glass it's the best practices thing. Because then you can get a more uniform feedstock which your reactor can mm. handle much better when the composition is constantly changing. So what's the big innovation you're looking for? I'm, I'm anticipating no, Sharon's no, question. I, I, just before that question, I just, just wanted to know, uh, it, of all the testing that you've done on different feedstock, is there any one that rises to the top? Is it plastic or, or you know, how, how do you, or is it plant sources or... How do you identify what are well, really good feedstocks to get yeah. the most energy? Or the well, most there's energy? always trade-offs. There's no sort of perfect solution. If there was a simple perfect solution, it had already been done. So a lot of the time, it's actually just getting good quality data and building up those data sets and then making decisions based on what your actual application is and what you have available. 
So a good fuel is wood. So like eucalyptus wood is a good fuel. But the problem is, is that's kind of a high value wood because it's a clean material that's got anything. many uses. Mm. So often we want to use lower value materials. So there's one thing we're working on called barnard grass, mm. which basically looks like sugar cane. But it's actually a grass and it has a very low sugar content. But that material will grow about 10 foot tall in about six months mm. uh, with a mm. big thick stem, which is maybe one or two inches in diameter. So it produces very, very high yields of material but on the downside it has a very high ash content and that high ash content can cause you problems in your conversion. Mm. So one of the things we look mm. at is say like water, using water washing to wash the biomass first, remove some of those ash components and then we can get the fuel properties closer to a good fuel such as a wood. So what's, what's the big innovation you're looking for? What's the aha moment? Uh, you know, what's, what's the, the achievement you want to reach here? Um, it, it rarely happens that you get the big aha moment. What you tend to find is you make small steps towards your goals. And then as other researchers are doing things, often it will be somebody else other than the people doing the research who will take an overview, see different aspects of different people's works, and then see a way to put that together in a way that will be financially viable. Because there's lots of things we can do, but we can't do them cost effectively. So it always really comes back to cost yeah. for it to be commercially applied. Yeah. So you might have the best process in the world, it's clean, but if it's going to make your electricity cost two or three mm -hmm. times as much as you're paying now, no one's interested. So in a funny way, I, I see you guys in competition. What I mean is you're More both looking for... <laughs> yeah. Am I right? Because you are trying to achieve a disruptive technology that will change renewable energy and rise to the top of the attention span somehow where everybody will say, oh, that's it. That's what we're going to do. Everybody to that side of the boat. They're Isn't that true? Aren't you in competition? <laughs> uh, we are in, uh, because um, the good thing about HNEI, you have a lot of um, different areas which really can come together perfectly. Like he's producing hydrogen, but that okay. hydrogen can be used to, for my materials that I'm making, mm -hmm. because I need to put hydrogen to absorb, but so that uh, I need to absorb hydrogen on them and then we hand it uh, all over to the fuel cell, the people doing the fuel cell actual component so that they integrate it into the fuel cell. And then we have also the other people that are doing the demonstration of, uh, mm. of yeah. some of these technologies that we are making. So there's really a lot of uh, synergy. And um, so which I think makes us even more competitive and more unique because you have different people working uh, or different researchers working on different aspects and they can share ideas and come up with a better product than having individual um, groups in different parts of the country. So, so you, your, your foc the other focus, your MBA focus on commercialization, what kinds of things are you working on, or anyone at h and working on, is like almost there, or there in commercializing uh, whatever the research might be? So in terms of, um, I, I haven't really um, yet the opportunity. I'm, I'm starting to want to uh, go towards commercialization now, but most of the year commercialization is um, handled through OTED. I think uh, in um, uh, right now, I think in collaboration with um, the University of Arizona's um, um, uh, 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 patent office. So most of it is, uh, and also I think there's another group within the university that's been created to uh, help uh, small, if you have a good idea that you want to s uh, see if it can be feathered or it, that, that could be commercialized, you can get maybe 5000 or $10,000 and then you try to uh, see if it can be commercialized on a smaller, on a, on a smaller scale. Ah, uh, now I understand the MBA. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm sure in a few years' time, or maybe in two years, I might be coming back. And, okay, I hope yeah. you still talk to us after you're a, you're a multi-billionaire, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he can fund my research. <laughs> Sharon, we're out of time. Oh. You want to try to summarize as the obligation of the co-host is? <laughs> well, I, I think this is wonderful that Hawaii Nat Natural Energy Institute has researchers like both Trevor and Godwin. 
that um, really looking at different different technologies, also storage, whether it's biomass and uses of biomass, but that it's, there's a hookup to the commercializing aspect. So it's not just pure science, but it's science that is useful for the society. So I'm really looking forward for you to come back and tell us what your mm -hmm. breakthroughs come through uh, to share with the public as well, because everybody is interested in renewable energy and what we can do yeah. you know, most cost effectively. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not only altruism then, Trevor. <laughs> no, <laughs> there, there, is, there is a commercial aspect. Of, but I like being paid, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's nice to eat in. Uh, yeah, yeah. I would say this, though. HNEI, we've spent a month with you guys. We've had four shows, and it's really beautiful. What you're doing, you're, you're putting Hawaii on the map in terms of the highest possible science as far as renewable energy is concerned. We're so proud of you. We, wa we want you to export knowledge everywhere, whether by altruism or, or, or sheer money. <laughs> Either way is fine. We want to be a leader in clean energy. You guys are part of that mission. Thank you so much for doing and that. Come yeah. back again. Come oh, back well, thank again. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you, thank you Trevor. Thank you, Goodwin. Thank you, Jimmy. Bye. <laughs>